You are listening to Section 3, Fables 41 through 60 of 300 Aesop's Fables, translated by George Filer Townsend. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mike Armenta. 41. The Ass and the Lapdog. A man had an ass and a Maltese lapdog, a very great beauty. The ass was left in a stable and had plenty of oats and hay to eat, just as any other ass would. The lapdog knew many tricks and was a great favorite with his master, who often fondled him and seldom went out to dine without bringing him home some tidbit to eat. The ass, on the contrary, had much work to do in grinding the corn mill and in carrying wood from the forest or burdens from the farm. He often lamented his own hard fate and contrasted it with the luxury and idleness of the lapdog, till at last one day he broke his cords and halter and galloped into his master's house, kicking up his heels without measure, and frisking and fawning as well as he could. He next tried to jump about his master as he had seen the lapdog do, but he broke the table and smashed all the dishes upon it to atoms. He then attempted to lick his master and jumped upon his back. The servants hearing the strange hubbub and perceiving the danger of their master quickly relieved him and drove out the ass to his stable with kicks and clubs and cuffs the ass as he returned to his stall beaten nearly to death thus lamented i have brought it all on myself why could I not have been contented to labor with my companions, and not wish to be idle all the day like that useless little lapdog? 42. The Lioness A controversy prevailed among the beasts of the field as to which of the animals deserved the most credit for producing the greatest number of whelps at a birth. They rushed clamorously into the presence of the lioness, and demanded of her the settlement of the dispute. "'And you,' they said, "'how many sons have you at a birth?' The lioness laughed at them and said, "'Why, I have only one, but that one is altogether a thoroughbred lion.'" The value is in the worth not in the number. 43. The Boasting Traveler A man who had traveled in foreign lands boasted very much, on returning to his own country, of the many wonderful and heroic feats he had performed in the different places he had visited. Among other things, he said that when he was at Rhodes, he had leaped to such a distance that no man of his day could leap anywhere near him as to that. There were in Rhodes many persons who saw him do it, and whom he could call as witnesses. One of the bystanders interrupted him, saying, Now, my good man, if this be all true, there is no need of witnesses. Suppose this to be Rhodes, and leap for us. 44. The Cat and the Cock A cat caught a cock, and pondered how he might find a reasonable excuse for eating him. He accused him of being a nuisance to men by crowing in the night-time, and not permitting them to sleep. The cock defended himself by saying he did this for the benefit of men, that they might rise in time for their labors. The cat replied, 
although you abound in specious apologies, I shall not remain supperless. And he made a meal of him. 45. The Piglet, the Sheep, and the Goat A young pig was shut up in a fold yard with a goat and a sheep. On one occasion, when the shepherd laid hold of him, he grunted and squeaked and resisted violently. The sheep and the goat complained of his distressing cries, saying, He often handles us, and we do not cry out. To this the pig replied, Your handling and mine are very different things. He catches you only for your wool or your milk, but he lays hold on me for my very life. 46. The Boy and the Filberts A boy put his hand into a pitcher full of filberts. He grasped as many as he could possibly hold, but when he tried to pull out his hand, he was prevented from doing so by the neck of the pitcher. Unwilling to lose his filberts, and yet unable to withdraw his hand, he burst into tears and bitterly lamented his disappointment. A bystander said to him, Be satisfied with half the quantity, and you will readily draw out your hand. Do not tempt too much at once. 47. The Lion in Love A lion demanded the daughter of a woodcutter in marriage. The father, unwilling to grant, and yet afraid to refuse his request, hit upon this expedient to rid himself of his importunities. He expressed his willingness to accept the lion as the suitor of his daughter on one condition, that he should allow him to extract his teeth and cut off his claws, as his daughter was fearfully afraid of both. The lion cheerfully assented to the proposal. But when the toothless, clawless lion returned to repeat his request, the woodman, no longer afraid, set upon him with his club and drove him away into the forest. 48. The Laborer and the Snake A snake having made his hole close to the porch of a cottage, inflicted a mortal bite on the cottager's infant son. Grieving over his loss, the father resolved to kill the snake. The next day, when it came out of its hole for food, he took up his axe, but by swinging too hastily, missed its head and cut off only the end of its tail. After some time, the cottager, afraid that the snake would bite him also, endeavored to make peace, and placed some bread and salt in the hole. The snake, slightly hissing, said, There can henceforth be no peace between us, for whenever I see you, I shall remember the loss of my tail, and whenever you see me, you will be thinking of the death of your son. No one truly forgets injuries in the presence of him who caused the injury. 49. The Wolf in Sheep's Clothing Once upon a time, the wolf resolved to disguise his appearance in order to secure food more easily. Encased in the skin of a sheep, he pastured with the flock, deceiving the shepherd by his costume. In the evening, he was shut up by the shepherd in the fold. The gate was closed, and the entrance 
made thoroughly secure. But the shepherd, returning to the fold during the night to obtain meat for the next day, mistakenly caught up the wolf instead of a sheep, and killed him instantly. Harm seek, harm find. 50. The Ass and the Mule A muleteer set forth on a journey, driving before him an ass and a mule, both well laden. The ass, as long as he traveled along the plain, carried his load with ease, but when he began to ascend the steep path of the mountain, felt his load to be more than he could bear. He entreated his companion to relieve him of a small portion, that he might carry home the rest. But the mule paid no attention to the request. The ass shortly afterwards fell down dead under his burden. Not knowing what else to do in so wild a region, the muleteer placed upon the mule the load carried by the ass, in addition to his own, and at the top of all placed the hide of the ass after he had skinned him. The mule, groaning beneath his heavy burden, said to himself, I am treated according to my deserts. If I had only been willing to assist the ass a little in his need, I should not now be bearing, together with his burden, himself as well. 51. The Frogs Asking for a King The frogs, grieved at having no established ruler, sent ambassadors to Jupiter, entreating for a king. Perceiving their simplicity, he cast down a huge log into the lake. The frogs were terrified at the splash occasioned by its fall, and hid themselves in the depths of the pool. But as soon as they realized that the huge log was motionless, they swam again to the top of the water, dismissed their fears, climbed up, and began squatting on it in contempt. After some time, they began to think themselves ill-treated in the appointment of so inert a ruler, and sent a second deputation to Jupiter to pray that he would set over them another sovereign. He then gave them an eel to govern them. When the frogs discovered his easy good nature, they sent yet a third time to Jupiter to beg him to choose for them still another king. Jupiter, displeased with all their complaints, sent a heron, who preyed upon the frogs day by day till there were none left to croak upon the lake. 52. The Boys and the Frogs Some boys, playing near a pond, saw a number of frogs in the water, and began to pelt them with stones. They killed several of them, when one of the frogs, lifting his head out of the water, cried out, Pray, stop, my boys. What is sport to you is death to us. 53. The Sick Stag A sick stag lay down in a quiet corner of its pasture ground. His companions came in great numbers to inquire after his health, and each one helped himself to a share of food which had been placed for his use, so that he died, not from his sickness, but from the failure of the means of living. 
evil companions bring more hurt than profit. 54. The Salt Merchant and His Ass A peddler drove his ass to the seashore to buy salt. His road home lay across a stream into which the ass, making a false step, fell by accident and rose up again with his load considerably lighter as the water melted the sack. The peddler retraced his steps and refilled his panniers with a larger quantity of salt than before. When he came again to the stream, the ass fell down on purpose in the same spot, and, regaining his feet with the weight of the load much diminished, brayed triumphantly as if he had obtained what he desired. The peddler saw through his trick, and drove him for the third time to the coast, where he bought a cargo of sponges instead of salt. The ass, again playing the fool, fell down on purpose when he reached the stream, but the sponges became swollen with water, greatly increasing his load. And thus his trick recoiled on him, for he now carried on his back a double burden. 55. The Oxen and the Butchers The oxen, once upon a time, sought to destroy the butchers who practiced a trade destructive to their race. They assembled on a certain day to carry out their purpose, and sharpened their horns for the contest. But one of them, who was exceedingly old, for many a field had he plowed, thus spoke, These butchers, it is true, slaughter us, but they do so with skillful hands, and with no unnecessary pain. If we get rid of them, we shall fall into the hands of unskillful operators, and thus suffer a double death. For you may be assured that though all the butchers should perish, yet will men never want beef. Do not be in a hurry to change one evil for another. 56. The Lion, the Mouse, and the Fox A lion, fatigued by the heat of the summer's day, fell fast asleep in his den. A mouse ran over his mane and ears and woke him from his slumbers. He rose up, and shook himself in great wrath, and searched every corner of his den to find the mouse. A fox, seeing him, said, A fine lion you are to be frightened of a mouse. Tis not a mouse, I fear, said the lion. I resent his familiarity and ill-breeding. Little Liberties are great offenses. 57. The Vain Jackdaw Jupiter determined, it is said, to create a sovereign over the birds, and made proclamation that on a certain day they should all present themselves before him, and he would himself choose the most beautiful among them to be king. The jackdaw, knowing his own ugliness, searched through the woods and fields, and collected the feathers which had fallen from the wings of his companions, and stuck them in all parts of his body, hoping thereby to make himself the most beautiful of all. When the appointed day arrived, and the birds had assembled before Jupiter, the jackdaw also made his appearance in his many feathered finery. 
but when jupiter proposed to make him king because of the beauty of his plumage the birds indignantly protested and each plucked from him his own feathers leaving the jackdaw nothing but a jackdaw fifty eight the goatherd and the wild goats a goatherd driving his flock from their pasture at eventide found some wild goats mingled among them and shut them up together with his own for the night the next day it snowed very hard so that he could not take the herd to their usual feeding places but was obliged to keep them in the fold he gave his own goats just sufficient food to keep them alive but fed the strangers more abundantly in the hope of enticing them to stay with him and of making them his own when the thaw set in he let them all out to feed and the wild goats scampered away as fast as they could to the mountains the goatherd scolded them for their ingratitude in leaving him when during the storm he had taken more care of them than of his own herd one of them turning about said to him that is the very reason why we are so cautious for if you yesterday treated us better than the goats you have had so long it is plain also that if others came after us you would in the same manner prefer them to ourselves old friends cannot with impunity be sacrificed for new ones fifty nine the mischievous dog a dog used to run up quietly to the heels of everyone he met and to bite them without notice his master suspended a bell about his neck so that the dog might give notice of his presence wherever he went thinking it a mark of distinction the dog grew proud of his bell and went tinkling it all over the market-place one day an old hound said to him why do you make such an exhibition of yourself that bell that you carry is not believe me any order of merit but on the contrary a mark of disgrace a public notice to all men to avoid you as an ill-mannered dog notoriety is often mistaken for fame sixty the fox who had lost his tail a fox caught in a trap escaped but in doing so lost his tail thereafter feeling his life a burden from the shame and ridicule to which he was exposed he schemed to convince all the other foxes that being tailless was much more attractive thus making up for his own deprivation he assembled a good many foxes and publicly advised them to cut off their tails saying that they would not only look much better without them that they would get rid of the weight of the brush which was a very great inconvenience if you had not yourself lost your tail my friend you would not thus counsel us end of section three